Hello, this is Ryan with HiBite, and today I'm bringing you the first video of the HiBite Intelligence Hub Connection Overview Series. Each video in this series will provide a complete overview of a connector. This includes how to set up the connector, how to build an input, how to build an output, and explanations of all optional settings along the way. And today we'll be talking about InfluxDB. InfluxDB is a time series database designed to store large volumes of time series data to quickly perform real-time analysis. What you're going to need for the connection is TCP connectivity to the InfluxDB uh, environment from the HiByte server. You'll also need access to the InfluxDB environment to view or create API tokens for the access of the integration. You'll also need to know the organization name if you have specified one and the bucket name that we'll be writing the data to. Let's hop into it. So today I'll be primarily working in um, InfluxDB's free cloud-based version. Uh, really easy to stand up um, and deploy, which um, obviously you can, you can review Influx's um, resources to, to set up um, your environment, um, but for this case, for the free version, uh, a couple notes that you can only have access to one bucket uh, and the retention policy for the data within that bucket can only be set to 30 days. Um, now, obviously, if you're implementing Influx uh, DB in a production scenario, you'd want to probably go to uh, one of the paid tiers, but again, for this example, we'll be primarily just working with the free version. Um, I also have a, um, a Docker-based version um, that I'll show you how to surface some of the information that you're going to need to establish the connection. So the first thing that we need to find is our endpoint URL and our organization name. And so for the free version, that's all um, readily available in the, uh, in the URL that you've um, stood up here. So I am going to just copy that into a notepad and um, paste my, um, my information here. So looking at the full URL, um, this will be our, our main um, endpoint URL, and then at the end here, this is our organization name. Um, next, what we'll need is to find in, or generate our API token. So the way this integration works is we're going to make just API calls using this token-based um, authentication. Um, so let's generate a new one. You can obviously leverage you know, the admin or, or any sort of default all-access tokens, but let's just show you how to set up a custom um, token here. So I'm just going to call this uh, demo video and um, grant read and write access to, to all buckets. You can tailor this uh, API token um, to, to meet your needs. If you're only going to be writing data out to, um, to InfluxDB, then you could obviously omit the, the read settings here. But for this example, I'm just going to select both. And so once we hit generate here, we can copy this to our clipboard and we'll be using that to populate uh, the highlight configuration here in just a second. Um, so just hopping over to my Docker deployment, the only thing I want to show you here is how to find your org name. Um, technically, if you haven't set up a, you know, an additional organization, um, you could technically leave the, um, the configuration as default when we get into HiByte, but um, you can easily just go to your, um, your admin icon here and uh, switch organizations just to see if you have other organizations set up. Um, in this case, I only have one, so um, that's, that's easy to find. All right, I am logged into my HiByte Intelligence Hub instance, and I'm going to create a new connection. Call this InfluxDB. Click Next. For protocol, InfluxDB. Now I'm going to populate uh, the information from, um, from my notepad that I have here in my other monitor. Specify our URL, our organization name, and then our token. And click Submit. Now that we have our InfluxDB connector created, um, let's show you what data we're going to be writing out to um, Influx before we cover the outputs and inputs. So I have an OPC UA server already defined here with a handful of motor tags already imported. Um, and I have a model set up um, just to capture some live status information that we're going to be writing out to Influx. So let's create an instance. Um, and associate some values from our OPC UA connector. So I don't have a, um, it looks like an ID, so I'll just use the default field here to populate that as a placeholder. 
Um, we'll map amps, air, speed, and vibration. So let's hit submit here and do a quick read, make sure we have some data coming in from our OPC UA server. Looks good. Let's now create our InfluxDB output. I'm going to go to InfluxDB, go to Outputs, and create a new output. Let's give it a name. We'll just call this Motor Output. Now we need to specify what bucket we're going to be writing to in InfluxDB. So for my AWS version, I only have one bucket to choose from, but to find out the name of that bucket, um, I'm going to go to Buckets and see that I have a demo bucket already created. You can easily create a new one with this Create Bucket field here, but let's just hop back over to our highlight instance and specify demo as the bucket. So you'll see a few other optional fields here, um, which were added in our 2.4 release. Um, measurement, name, tags, and timestamps. So for measurement, this will, if left blank, default to the model name of the, of the flow. Or in the case of if you're writing directly from an input to the uh, InfluxDB output, it will uh, populate this with complex data as a placeholder. But we can always override this as, um, as needed. Um, with whatever um, whatever name you want to give it for your use case. For this first example, I'm going to leave it blank. The second field here is name. Um, name will default to the instance name, or again, if you're writing directly from a uh, from an input, it will um, specify as complex data. But again, you can override that to meet your needs. And you can add data tags. Um, in the name equals value format, which I'll show you an example here um, in, in a little bit. But I want to start with just, um, just the default values just so you can see how this is populated. So let's, now that we've hit submit on our output, go to our instance and create a flow. So I'm going to go to my reference panel, type output, go to my influx DB, and drag my motor output. So now I'm going to keep this pretty simple and just write out to every minute as an always interval and let's enable this. So that flow is running. Looks like we have no errors, which is always great. I'm gonna hop back over to my influx environment, go to buckets and go into my demo bucket here. And we can see here through our build a query uh, view that we have our motor live status we can see our amps, airs, motors, ID, speed, and vibration. And again, there's that instance name automatically populated to the name um, value. And we can just do a quick run here to see those, those data points. Um, I guess I should also include at this point that I'm nowhere near an InfluxDB expert, but um, you could obviously um, start at this point visualizing and, and running different, um, different data points and different reports on this data. All right, let's take this a step further and uh, show you some power behind some of those other optional fields within the output. Um, before I do that, let's, um, let's go to our instance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to templatize this, uh, this instance. In this example, I might have a, a number of motors, uh, in this case, motor 001, 2, and 3, that have the same structure at the source OPC level. So the same channel name, same tag names, um, that uniformity between the like assets. So what I want to do is I want to templatize this instance. Um, and I'm going to add a parameter called motor ID and give it a pattern of 001 to 003. And so what I'll do is I'll just give this um, motor this dot motor ID. So this is the way to reference this parameter within your, your configuration. So I'm going to hit, um, I'll, let's make a quick update here. So I'm going to just replace the motor ID 001, all these values and the default in the expression with um, this dot motor ID. So again, the, this is really powerful when you do have your source systems um, set up in a way where like assets have the same uniformity. Um, really the only thing that's different is that identifier, in this case, the, the ID. So I'm going to hit save here and hop back over to my, well actually let's just do a quick read to make sure um, make sure this is, is all functional. So we're doing 
we're returning as user one there, but I can also go to actions templates and see some of those other templated values. Um, and cool, we're seeing um, seeing those data points for the other other motors. All right, we have our instance templatized. Now let's go back into our InfluxDB output and uh, make some adjustments here. So I'm going to first uh, specify a measurement of motor status. Maybe you will be collecting uh, multiple measurements around your motor and you want to um, segment that data out on the influx side. And I can also give this a name here. Um, again, maybe the use case is I'm looking to, um, to collect multiple um, locations worth of, of data around motors. Um, in this case, I'm working in my Blanksville environment. Um, but maybe I want to scale this across uh, multiple locations to have that visibility into, uh, into the business from multiple locations. Uh, and then finally what I'm going to do here is I'm going I'm to specify a tag name. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just stick with the, the motor ID example. And I'm going to use some dynamic referencing by doing bracket bracket this dot uh, motor ID. And the way this works is as this, um, this output is utilized, um, through the instance, we're going to pull out that motor ID and automatically populate the, um, the data tag from the influx side here. So um, this all looks good. Let's hit add and, uh, and save and then we'll hop into influx to review this in just a second. All right, we're back in influx DB. What I've done is I've recreated my, um, my demo bucket from scratch just so we're starting with a blank slate here. Um, and now we'll hop back into our high byte environment and, uh, and enable our flow. So we should see data starting to populate here. Um, you can see now we see measurement as motor status. Again, that overrided value from the output setting. Um, we can now filter by the name motor from Blanksville. Again, use case here is you might have multiple locations writing to a single uh, influx DB environment and just an easy way to filter that data um, to, to start building your um, your dashboards and your visualization aspects here. Um, so now let's go uh, I'm going to just do field here and maybe I want to do motor ID and we'll just look at speed for now. Uh, I'm just going to select one do a quick run here and we can see those values being populated um, and eventually starting to uh, dashboard here. Now let's go and just select our other um, motor IDs here that again that are being populated as a tag because we specified in our um, in our output motor ID equals this dot motor ID. So we're we're using some dynamic referencing again just to um, drive that configuration um, and, and start leveraging some known configurations um, within the intelligence hub. So you can see now that we're having all our motors. Um, based on our query window up here, writing to our, our table and uh, starting to be visualized in the, um, in the graph. All right, so the final topic for this video will be covering inputs in InfluxDB. You might have a variety of different reasons to create, um, create an input from your InfluxDB data source. Um, you might want to complement existing data sets with transactional data or perhaps you're populating a unified namespace or a variety of other reasons. Um, so I'm gonna cover just a, a couple quick uh, tips on building out your query to, um, to source data and, and pull that back into the Intelligence Hub. Um, so before I go into an, ex an example here, what I wanna show you is a kind of a quick tip um, and that's using the query, query builder here from Influx. So I'm just under my bucket exploring the, the data and I have uh, my query all built out here. And what I can do is I can link to source. And what that will do is give me a link to paste into a new tab and give me, uh, you know, translate my, my query builder here into the actual query language. Um, so I can copy this and there's a couple couple things I need to do to, uh, you know, to, to make this functional within the Intelligence Hub. And really the, I have a kind of simplified example here in my input. I'm basically querying my demo bucket for the last six hours every minute. Um, so below this example is what I just copied in and you need to do a couple uh, quick conversions to, um, to the language around the, the time. So you can see this, this line here um, coming in from my source from the query builder, uh, start v time range start, stop v time range stop. So I've, 
uh, manipulated that in a way that's going to be able to be interpreted from the intelligence hub, and that's you know starting minus six h, so six hours, and stop minus one minute, one minute prior. Um, so that's one just kind of caveat to uh, to copying from um, from your source that you'll just need to update that. But in in short, referencing the um, the InfluxDB documentation, which we'll link into the description, as well in our input section in our user guide as about well, how to build uh, your query to really uh, pull that targeted data set that you're looking for. Um, and I'll just do a quick read here to show you what the output looks like. And so since we're specifying the last six hours and uh, iterating through every minute, this is just gonna return an array of, of data with all those different values. Um, so um, just, just take note of that. Um, otherwise, the only thing, I, the additional um, setting in the inputs I want to cover for this video is enabling cache. So what, what this does is gives you a lifetime of, of your read, essentially. So if I have some static data that you know I'm not expecting to change maybe day over day, I can set this to be a lifetime cache of one day. So if there's any, you know, I'll read it, you know, start of the day get that latest value from InfluxDB, but now I'm going to be caching based on this lifetime value. So any other reads uh, from flow executions or even just, you know, a quick read input uh, is going to look at the local cache on the Highbyte server. Um, so this is a really, really easy way to control sort of the loads onto your input systems. We commonly see this on, you know, again, static data that might be coming from databases that you want to um, ensure there's not a, a heavy load of, of constant reads on your source system. So um, just a quick, quick tip on how to you know, really optimize the performance around your data operations. All right, in summary, we just covered how to build out our InfluxDB connector, showed you how to surface all the needed information from our InfluxDB environment and populate the high byte detail screen. Uh, from there, we covered how to build outputs using a variety of different ways, um, then covered how to build out our inputs and how to build out our InfluxDB query. Hopefully you found this information useful. Again, uh, reference the description for, uh, for that query building guide from InfluxDB's website. Uh, hopefully you found this, this overview video helpful in your, um, in your usage of the Intelligence Hub. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to connect with us in, in the ways you see here on the screen. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.